Hey guys, welcome back to Reroll the Tale, where I retell the stories of Ridley from the Wild Mao campaign that I am currently playing in. This one's a rough one. I just played this session less than 24 hours ago and I'm still just... Uh, uh, follow me on TikTok or Instagram, you probably know why. Even though this is coming out much later. Let's, let's, let's just get into it. Last we left off, the party met Trent and he hired us to investigate some murders at the Vergessen Sanatorium. And we arrived there. Right off the bat, Ridley recognizes this place. She knows she's been there multiple times before. We start questioning people of if they've seen anything, if they know how many people were murdered, all the questions. <laughs> Um, we start going from cell to cell, asking the patients at the sanatorium. Um, most of them we can't hold a proper conversation with, but there's one man who recently checked in. He'd only been there for about a week, and we're having like an actual conversation with this guy. When all of the sudden, Ridley's the one talking to him, and she instinctually puts up her hand to block some spray that's coming at her. She looks down at her hand and it's covered in blood. She looks back up at the man and he's been, well, there's a hole in his forehead with smoke coming out of it. Having no idea what's going on, Ridley just instinctually casts Dispel Magic in that moment. And for a second, she sees a woman in black leathers with a shiny silver gun in her hand, and then she vanishes. We continue going around to each cell, speaking with patients, and we come across this one man who, when he sees Ridley, immediately starts screaming and panicking. So Ridley leaves the cell and just stands outside. They start talking to this man, why are you so scared of her? He starts rambling about Vesterogna and how she is a horrible woman and a crazy woman and he's made so many mistakes in his life. Turns out <laughs> he's the man from Vess's journal, Ridley's dad, and also the father of Olivia. <sighs> the rest of the party's in the cell just trying to fit all the pieces together while Ridley's sitting outside listening to all of this. The man reveals that the only reason why he wanted to be in Vesteragna's inner circle is because he wanted extra money for his family back home in Nicodranas. He manipulated Vess, you know, like, good for him, but as Ridley finds this out, she's just fuming at the fact that he would go so far, so-called, for his family. So she then bursts back into the cell. The man freaks out again. She sticks out her arm and casts command on him, commanding him to freeze. <laughs> she says, in her full Zemnian accent, I'm not gonna try to do it, because <sighs> we're, not, we're not gonna embarrass ourselves like that today. Are you really that blind you can't see your daughter right in front of you? Pointing to Olivia your only daughter, drops freeze, walks out of the cell. She's not a happy bin. She's, she's not, she's really not. As Ridley starts walking away, Olivia follows her out. She's yelling, what's that all about? What's going on? Ridley just puts her head up and keeps walking. Olivia, fuming as well, casts blood maledict on Ridley. Oh, this was terrifying. So Ridley, can no longer move, she's constricted by the blood maledict as blood is swirling around her. Olivia just yells to Ridley, you are going to talk to me about this, what's going on? Are you only here because of Vess? Are you spying on us? Are you working for Vess? Ridley thinks back to when she first dimension doored onto the ship. She doesn't know where that dimension door came from. She didn't have magic at that point. She doesn't know how that happened. She's just thinking about that and wondering, was that Vess? Could that have been Vess? Could she have been planted there all along? And she was just some puppet on a string. So Ridley just screams back, I don't know. And a single tear falls down her cheek. At Ridley's yelling, the party hears her and comes running around the corner where both Olivia and Ridley are. 
and they see Ridley constricted by Olivia's blood and Olivia with blackened eyes. Olivia turns to Bellinus and asks, do you trust her? Bellinus responds, with my life, yes. With my nieces, probably not. <laughs> Olivia then faints. Ridley's dropped from the blood maledict and just collapses to the ground. After a moment, they, they get back up <laughs> and continue searching. They next go to a surgery room and meet with a surgeon. They tell him about the man who was murdered and asks if he can go see the body. The whole party goes with him except Ridley who stays behind and starts investigating the room. While she's looking around, Bellinus suddenly comes back in the door. Ridley tenses up, like, oh, what's going on? Everything's so tense right now. She sees it's Bellinus and relaxes a little bit. He just grabs a scalpel gives her a bit of a goofy look and leaves. As Ridley continues to investigate the room, she finds a key. She tries it on every lock she can find when finally it opens a door. This door leads to a small room with a bookshelf, a desk, a golden mirror, a teleportation circle, and a raven. <laughs> She first walks up to the raven and gives him a little pat across its head. It just starts asking for corn? I don't know. <laughs> she then looks at the bookshelf and goes through some books. She finds records of patients that have been in and out of the sanatorium. She finds a page with her name on it. She tears out the page and puts it in her pocket. She puts the book back, investigates the desk. The desk is very locked and she can't find anything. She then turns her attention to the mirror. She accidentally starts scrying on a conversation with Trent and Vess. They're having a discussion on whether or not it was a good idea to send Ridley to the sanatorium, if she'll remember everything that happened there, and if she would be another loose end. Vess makes a pointed joke at Trent, claiming that the first loose end was his fault and Vess shouldn't be blamed for that and anything that happens with Ridley. Ridley finds that really interesting. She's not the only one who knows about this place and knows its secrets. Hmm. Trent suddenly shifts his focus and says, it looks like we have an unwanted visitor. Ridley punches the mirror, shattering it, forgetting that there is a teleportation circle in the room. <laughs> suddenly, with a flash of arcane energy, Trent is standing in the room before her. Before Trent can say anything, Ridley just says, I think your bird wants some corn. Trent pulls out of his pocket some kernels of corn and feeds the raven. In our campaign, it is canonical that Trent has corn in his pockets at all times. That's the big takeaway from this session. If there's anything to take away, it is that. <sighs> anyway. Then Trent turns his attention back to Ridley. What do we have here snooping around? She just says, Sorry, you gave us free reign of this place, you know, doing the job that you're too lazy to do. Yeah, she really shouldn't sass um, members of the Cerberus Assembly. I regret many things. <laughs> she then tries to walk past him, and he grabs her on the shoulder. She suddenly sees flashes of her time in the sanatorium, remembering parts that she didn't realize she didn't know. It's like Trent unlocked some memories that she didn't remember she had. Ridley just lets out a scream, to which the party hears her and starts running back to her. They come back and see Ridley alone in Trent's office, just blank stare. Olivia says it's time to leave. Ridley, just a little glassy still, walks back over to the raven, gives him one more scratch on the head, and they all leave. They head back to Vess's place to collect their gold, and Ridley and Vess have a bit of a sit-down conversation. Vess doesn't understand why Ridley's being so errant, and Ridley's just tired of all of this, of being her errand runner. Ridley takes out Vess's personal journal and drops it on the table. It was a good read, but not one that I'd want to pick up again. Vess asks, how long have you known? Ridley just responds, it doesn't matter. He's not my father and you're not my mother. I'm my own person. Vess says she's cutting off Ridley and doesn't want anything to do with her anymore. Fine by Ridley. Bellinus at that point just kind of drags everybody out and they all get a tavern to stay in for the night. Everyone gets their own rooms. Ridley's just, <sighs> It's a lot to process in one day. Ridley hears a knock at her door. Uh, she's not answering. It's, no. Bellina slips a note under her door. <sighs> the note reads, Ridley, 
I don't care about your reasons for doing what you do. However, if you intend any harm to this group, I will suggest you leave now. If not, please understand I am here to help you whether you like it or not. In Amonitor's graces, Bellinus. Later, there's another knock at the door. It's Olivia. Ridley still does not answer. She does not want to communicate with people right now. Regardless, Olivia sends Nightshade outside through Ridley's window and acts as Olivia's eyes. They start talking about family and how Ridley thinks Olivia's selfish for talking about how terrible her life was when Ridley's was equally as bad, but she didn't have a family to get her through it. And now she has the gall to call her a sister. Yeah, Ridley's really not about it at all. She's really mad about the whole sister thing. At that point, Olivia's just a reminder of everything that she didn't have, and her calling her a sister is soul-crushing. Ridley finally gets Olivia to leave, but not before Olivia says, wake up early tomorrow and bring Soul Taker. I still owe you a lesson. Ridley stays up late and pulls out a glass eye that Bellinus gave her a while ago. She casts clairvoyance, and she decides to scry on the place where she first met the Mighty Nine after the day of Vess attacking them and killing Olivia, and that whole day and everything that came with it. <laughs> she knows scrying on that place right now won't reveal anything for her, she just wants to sit there for a minute, look around, and just enjoy it. She sleeps in the next morning. <laughs> completely ignoring the lesson that Olivia wanted to give her. She's sitting in her room thinking about Bellinus's note and decides she could really use some fresh air to think about things. She jumps out her window, not wanting to interact with the party at all, and starts wandering around Rexentrum. She makes her way to the school, just starts walking around campus, seeing all the students. She hears a voice in her head. Why so sad? Suddenly, she's bounced to a tropical location. And next to her is a man with fluffy red hair and a green cloak. He hands her a Mai Tai. <laughs> she has a drink. Kind of annoyed by everything though, she quickly asks to go back and wander around Rexentrum again. He obliges and suddenly she's back at the school. She does notice, however, there's a little tropical flower in her hair still. After wandering around the campus for a while, she goes to a tavern to get some breakfast. Or lunch, probably, at this point. <laughs> she has some food and just starts thinking about her predicament. Should she leave, like Bellinus had mentioned? Or should she make amends with everyone? She then decides to travel to an alley where she can find some quiet to cast a spell. She wants to know what path lies ahead of her. If it's one of wheel or woe, good or bad. So she casts augury. She takes the hairpin out of her hair and she uses that as an element for her spell. The spell shows her an easy path, one of power and darkness, and that shows a harder path of happiness and light, and that's the answer she receives. She's still uncertain of what to do, but then she thinks she made up her mind. She thinks about both paths lying ahead of her, and she decides exactly what she wants to do. Then she notices a small coin on the ground. She reaches down to pick it up, and as she reaches down, she notices that her white tunic is soaked in red. She looks up and sees a woman in black leathers with a shiny silver gun in her hand pointed at Ridley's head. And then everything goes dark. So this session just happened less than 24 hours ago, and I have no idea what's going to happen. So, uh... <laughs> Uh, as always, if you have any theories, drop them in the comments below. I really want to hear what you guys think, especially this time. <sighs> That's where the session ended. That was the last thing that happened. So yeah, um, I would love to hear what you guys think. If you would like to continue to follow these stories, whether they're Ridley's or not, <laughs> they may not be anymore. I don't know. <laughs> um, be sure to like and subscribe. And follow me on social media if you want more updates on me freaking out. <sighs> I'll see you next time if we re-roll the tale. I'm sure we will. I'm, sh <sighs> I'm stressed. <laughs>